Hello, welcome to another exciting tutorial in Adobe Photoshop. Today we're going to teach you how to adjust professional adjustment using curves or levels, curves or levels. So let's get started. Now, what I'm about to share with you can be done in basically any version past 1995 of Photoshop. Okay, so uh, CS2, CS3, CS4, etc., etc. This can be done in those software programs. Now, the way I get started is I always make a clone copy of my image. Drag this down to a new layer icon. I'm going to double click and I'm going to call this truck WC for working copy. Now, very important to understand the target layer. I don't want to see this layer. I just want to affect this layer, make a change, save a change. Good app to get into. Now, I'm going to share with you some very powerful techniques of how I can color correct this image. Mm -hmm. This image is very washed out. Okay. Up here, I have too many highlights. I don't have enough shadows. The thing that separates a good photo from a bad photo is contrast. Does it have the correct amount of contrast? Is it not have enough shadows? Is it too blown out, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to share with you a couple of concepts. Under the image menu, anything about the image is under the image menu. Image adjust, adjust the levels, command L. Command L for levels for Macintosh, control L for Windows. I just want to share something with you, all right? If you look at this image right now, it's very muddy. It's all congested in here. My objective is to make some highs and lows. I want to have breathing room between my pixels, okay? I'm going to show, share with you a very powerful technique of how I can make this happen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to our three-point eyedropper tool, letter I for eyedropper. If you get the shift I, shift I, it will toggle, and I want to get this eyedropper tool. Now, the advantage of the three-point eyedropper tool, wherever I click, it's going to put one, then a two, then a three. Command Option Z does that. Control Option Z for Windows. Command Option Z, Command Option Z. So here's my objective. I want to tell Photoshop where the darkest part of this object image is and the lightest part of the image is. Now, it looks like it's this, but don't be fooled to find out that it's actually someplace down here. So how would I know that? Well, I'm going to share with you a very powerful technique of how I can get the darkest dark and the lightest light of my image and counterbalance it from there. Now, what I want to share with you is adjustment layers. I come down here. These are new adjustment layers. Now, how does that affect the image differently from going to the image menu? Well, very simply, the image menu adjustments physically affect that actual layer. It's physically adjusting those pixels. So if I did something like this as an example, it physically changed those pixels. I don't want to do that. Command Z undoes. So if you go down here to make an adjustment layer, it doesn't physically affect the pixels. You can actually turn on, turn off. So as an example, I'm going to go to you at saturation. And I'm just going to desaturate the photo and make it black and white. Okay. Now I didn't physically, I didn't physically change the pixels. I just adjusted this adjustment layer. Now this adjustment layer, I can double click, go back into it again. I can basically make it more saturated, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to share with you is that the adjustment layer doesn't do physical damage to the pixels. It's a very cool production technique and a very powerful tool. Now you can turn your adjustment layer on or off. Right now it's on, right now it's off, on, off. Now I don't want this adjustment layer, so I'm going to take this and trash it. Now a couple of choices that you have when you trash an adjustment layer. Do you want to apply it or do you want to just delete it? In this particular case, I want to delete it. Now, I'm going to show, share with you a very powerful technique of how I can set the whitest white and the darkest dark of this particular image. What we're going to do here is make sure that this image is targeted. Okay, so we're going to come down here to Adjustment Player, and we're going to pick Threshold. Now, Threshold is going to tell you the whole entire range of pixels. So as an example, if I drag down to here, it's going to tell me darkest darks. If I drag up to here, it's going to tell me the whitest whites or the highlights of my image. So what I want to do here is drag right about here, and I'll move this out of the way for a second. Okay, I command plus key, control plus for Windows. I'm going to zoom in here for a second. 
Space bar, grab the page, move the page. I'm going to back this up a little bit here. I'm going to say that that's the darkest of the darks. I'm going to click. That puts a one right here. Okay? So with my three point eyedropper, I'm in my adjustment layer threshold. I drag this to the point of getting my darkest dark. Now, technically, officially, this is actually my darkest dark. I'm not going to split hairs here over a couple of pixels. Now, the other thing I want to share with you, if you want to get really precise with this, you can hit the up arrow key to up my pixels, down arrow key, moves down my pixels. All right, so we set the darkest dark of this image. Now we're going to drag all the way up here, command and key zero fits this in my Windows command, zero, control zero for Windows. So I'm going to take this and drag all the way up. Now again, most of you assume that this reflective area right here was my highlight, my hotspot, but it's actually down here. So this will basically pinpoint exactly the hot spot. So I'm going to zoom into your command plus, space bar, grab the page, move the page. Again, anytime I hear the command key, it's the control key for Windows. I'm on Macintosh. So I'm going to basically up arrow key and I'm going to make this point right there. I'm going to click. That's going to be point two. Now, how does this help me? First of all, command zero, command zero fits in the window. So I've now set up my darkest point and my lightest points. And now if I go back to my target layer and I hide this adjustment layer, I don't need the thresholds there. I just use the thresholds as a production tool. Now I can see this is my highlights. I'm sorry, this is my shadow. This is my highlight. Now, again, important step here. If I come up to here at image menu, anything I do here is going to physically permanently make changes to the pixels. I want to benefit from Photoshop's production tools. I don't want to make a physical change to those pixels. I want to make an adjustment layer. So I'm going to come down here again and adjustment layer. We're going to go to levels. Okay, let's just move out for a second. All right, so levels. Now, what I need to do, I need to pick the whitest white and the darkest darks. Watch how amazingly simple and amazingly cool this is. I'm going to pick my white eyedropper tool. I'm going to pick the whitest white, which is right there. Click. All right. Now I'm going to go to my black eyedropper tool and I'm going to pick the blackest of the black, which is right there. Click. And just like that, how incredibly cool is that? Now, I still have some finessing to do in my midtones. I could adjust my midtones down. I could adjust my midtones up. But you have to admit that I have a better image here. So I'm going to hit the F key once, the F key twice to hide my palettes. So this is what I have. This is what I have. Okay, big difference. Okay, so this is what I this is what I had. This is what I have by using my proven techniques for adjusting images. Very, very powerful technique. Big difference, it took a couple of seconds. Now, I want to share with, I'm going to hit F key again to hide. Go back to my view here. F goes to gray background, F goes to black background, and hide your palettes. Now, if you want to stay in your black background and see your palettes, you simply hit the tab key. And if you want to hide your secondary palettes, it's a shift tab key. We'll hide your secondary palettes. I like to be in this mode right here. So I can access all my tools from here. The lasso tool, the marquee tool, the pen tool, etc., etc. This is how I work. This is how I roll. I don't need to see the menus. I know the shortcuts. Eventually you'll get there as well. F key. So I just want to share with you that it's a very simple technique. Now, we could have a very important step here, right? We could have not, I'm going to the tab key again to bring back my palace. We could have done this with out the threshold as a tool. We could have done it that way too. We could have just guessed on this. We could have just hit this as an example. Okay, I turn the adjustment layer off. So let's actually physically change the pixels. So we could go to the image menu, image adjust, adjust, levels, command L. So without, which is simply guessing, I probably could have done this as well. But the threshold technique is gonna get you the exact pixel highlight and the exact pixel shadow. So again, I can do this from here without the threshold. 
I go to my white eyedropper. I pick my widest spot. Now, let's say I wasn't paying attention. Option key resets is control key. Windows, option key resets. See over here to the right? With every change you make, if you want to go back to your default without canceling and coming back, option key resets. Control key, Windows. So I'm going to just guess that this is the highlight. I'm going to click right there and guess that someplace underneath here is the shadow. Now, it's still it's still looking good. It's still looking good. And this is the type of effect I'm looking for. But it's not the exact perfect highlight and the exact perfect shadow. That's what these cars are right here. So I just want to share with you that simple technique. We'll do more stuff in our next video.